Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today we are blending up a tube of Almond Oat Creamy Conditioning Face Wash. This formulation is a continuation of the Almond Oat theme that I have been riffing on for the past few months. So if you would like to check out some other formulations that also feature almondy oaty goodness, please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. I have linked to all the other formulations down there. This formulation is basically an emulsion. I've kept things quite simple because it is a rinse off or wash off product. So there's really no need to put really fancy ingredients into the formulation because you know it's really just getting rinsed off and sent down the drain. I like to save fancier ingredients for leave on formulations. Our heated water phase is a very simple blend of distilled water, moisturizing vegetable glycerin, and a, just a wee bit of citric acid to bring the pH of the final product down into that mildly acidic range that is good for our skin barrier health. In the heated oil phase, you'll find some BTMS 25. That is our emulsifier and it is cationic. It's conditioning. It leaves the skin feeling just divine after rinse off. And then of course, almond oil for our almondy thing. You will also find some colloidal oatmeal in the heated oil phase, even though it is not an oil soluble ingredient. And I do that because I find that if you put the colloidal oatmeal in the heated water phase, it cooks up into a kind of gloppy porridge. It's just kind of sort of slimy and uncooperative. Um, but if you put it in the oil phase, that doesn't happen. And then you end up, you know, combining the phases and getting in there with your immersion blender anyways, and it all disperses beautifully and is just lovely. Uh, but without that sort of blah, blah, blah uh, part when you're combining the phases. Our cool down phase features our preservative, Liquid Dermal Plus, our antioxidant, vitamin E, a bit of moisturizing hydrolyzed oat protein, and some cocoa mitopropyl betaine, which is a really gentle amphoteric surfactant. The cocoa mitopropyl betaine and the behentramonium methosulfate that is present in the BTMS 25. Those are our two cleansing rinse off ingredients. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, hey Marie, that looks a lot like a hair conditioner formulation or you know, a cleansing hair conditioner formulation. And you would be absolutely right. Uh, you can 100% use this formulation as a cleansing conditioner if you want. As a formulator, it is always a wonderful exercise to look at a formulation and think, what else could this be? As consumers, we are often presented with products and told that they have just one purpose. This is a lotion, this is a shampoo, this is a hand wash, this is a body wash, but there is no reason you can't wash your body with shampoo. And with this formulation, there's no reason you can't use this you know, creamy conditioning face wash as a cleansing conditioner. If you have ever made lotion before, this is very easy to make. As always, please make sure you are going down to the description box below this video and clicking through to the partner blog post over on humblebeeandme.com. You'll find tons of extra great information in that post, information on all of the ingredients, information on my formulation decisions, information on how to substitute out any of the ingredients that you might not have, or you know if you need to make changes because you have a nut allergy, heaps of great extra information down there. And of course, links to all the other almond oat formulations I have shared this year. But yeah, let's go get started. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated water phase. So in this beaker, I already have 55.19 grams of distilled water. And to that, I'm going to add 20 grams of vegetable glycerin. You'll also need 0.01 grams citric acid. We'll need just three ingredients for our heated oil phase. You'll need four grams of BTMS 25. This is our emulsifier and the conditioning ingredient. If you have BTMS 50 and would like to use that instead, please make sure you're reading the blog post. You'll need 10 grams of sweet almond oil. So this is the almond part of our formulation, but if you need to swap it out, it's quite easy. There are details on that in the blog post linked in the description box below this video. And then lastly, four grams of colloidal oatmeal. Before we heat our heated phases, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight so I can replace any water that is lost to evaporation during heating. To heat the phases through, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stovetop over medium low heat for about 20 to 30 minutes to melt everything through and heat the water phase and the oil phase to the same temperature. Once everything has heated through, you can remove your water bath from the heat 
And I'm going to begin by topping off the water phase. Pop that on our scale, grab a bit of preheated distilled water, and then add just enough water to get that number back up to the one that we wrote down earlier. Then we'll add the water phase to the oil phase. And up next, we are going to blend this up with our immersion blender. Pop that in there and start with a few short pulses before working up to a full blend. All right, that was about three minutes of blending. You can see that this is starting to gain some lovely viscosity. It is still really quite warm though, so I am going to set this aside to continue to cool while we weigh out our cool down phase. So for our cool down phase, we'll need just four ingredients. So in this little dish, I've already weighed out three grams of cocoa mitopropyl betaine. So up next, we're going to need three grams of hydrolyzed oat protein. You'll need 0.3 grams of tocopherol or vitamin E, and you can look this up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia to learn more. And for our preservative, you'll need half a gram of liquid Germol Plus. This is thickening up really nicely. It is still pretty warm. I'm gonna give this another quick blend. Once the product is thick enough that it's kind of hanging on to the blender like this, you've blended it enough, we're, we're all good. Uh, on the blending front, so I'm just going to kind of tap the blender off and scrape it down and then pop it in my dishes bin. And then up next, we'll just be waiting for the emulsion to cool down enough to add our cool down phase. So I'll come back and give it a stir every now and then to check on it until it's about room temperature. Once the contents of the beaker have cooled down so they're about room temperature, we can uh, combine our heated phase, which is now no longer hot, with our cool down phase. So I'm just going to add a blob of product to this little dish. And then I'm going to start by kind of cutting it in a bit with a whisk. These little wire whisks are very commonly available at kitchen supply stores and on Amazon. And then once you can kind of start whisking a little bit more enthusiastically without slopping thin liquid everywhere, uh, do that. <laughs> and then whisk until this is nice and silky smooth and uniform. So you'll notice this is really thin. That is totally normal. The surfactant causes quite a lot of thinning. So we will transfer the contents of our cool down dish into the main beaker and this will absolutely thin the uh, thin everything out. That is totally normal, totally okay and expected. So up next, I'm going to check the pH of this product to make sure it is mildly acidic. So we will begin by making a 10% dilution of the product. We're gonna weigh two grams into this little bowl and then add just enough distilled water to make 20 grams. So once our 10% solution is uniform, we're gonna grab our pH meter to test. If you wanna learn more about this and why we create a dilution, since I know it does seem rather counterintuitive, please make sure you check out the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on pH meter. We've got details on this model and links to more helpful information about pH testing. Turn it on and tip the dish to make sure we fully submerge everything and pop it in there and wait. All right, 4.88, that is good. For cleansers, we are generally aiming to be in the 4.5 to 5.5 range. So I'll rinse that off, power it down, give it a little bit of a gentle wipe there, pop it back in its cleansing solution and that's ready to go away. All right, so all that is left at this point in time is to package it up. I'm going to be using this soft squeeze tube from Yellow Bee. This was a gift. And to fill it, I'm going to use a syringe. I've got an empty syringe here and I'm just gonna prop it up in this glass jar I have on hand uh, in order to you know, hold it upright so that I can fill it and then pop it in the tube. So 
I'm going to begin by squeezing a bunch of air out of the tube before inserting the syringe into it and then sort of slowly and you want to again make sure you're squeezing air out of there so that there's room for the product because the syringe tends to seal this hole off well enough that there's not room for air to escape. Just make up a quick little label using some of these stickers I had printed at Sticker Mule with the Humblebee and Me Bumblebee. For a little bit of a demo, I just popped a bit of lip gloss on the back of my hand. So this is a creamy cleanser. It's got lots of fat in it and very little surfactant, so it's not really gonna lather up a bunch. We will get kind of a low, creamy, a slippy sort of lather. But you know, if you're watching me put this on and thinking, hey man, that really looks like you're just applying lotion to your skin. Uh, yeah, that's, that's more or less it. Uh, this really is not all that different from a lotion formulation wise. So it makes just a really gentle, creamy, gorgeous cleanser. So you can see, you know, you add a bit of water and it does work up into this low kind of creamy lather in it rinses off really, really nicely. See the lip gloss is long gone, but yeah, not tons and tons of bubbles, just gentle, creamy cleansing. And there we go. So we just made a gorgeous almond oat conditioning cream face wash. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to go down to the description box below this video and click through to read the full partner blog post. You'll find tons of extra information in that post, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients, and links to the other almond oat formulations that I have shared recently, including a natural body lotion and a solid body wash bar. Boy, yeah. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you next time.